Hi, my name is Jonathan Hicks. I'm back at the Dice Cup, and this evening I'm joined by Matt, Steve, and we just finished playing De Crypto, which is a team-based game, sort of about code giving, a bit like code names. So uh, one person on a team will be the code giver. So Steve, let's say, is the code giver, and he's trying to communicate. You see, they have their board here, um, a certain secret clue. So in this case, you can see it's one four two to uh, Matt, who's on the team. Now, what they're each looking at is one of these. So uh, me on, on my team, and I'd have a teammate as well, is looking at this, and if you can see this, if I angle it properly. So there's these little slide-in things. You sort of slide the cards in, and then it reveals certain words. So in this case, I've got baby, orchestra, dust, and construction, but they don't know that. Um, so they're trying to communicate their numbers. I draw my own one, so I've got 431. So I want my team, if you like, through the clues I give, to guess if it's 431, it's gonna be construction, dust, baby. So I then try and write certain clues on here. So these are the previous clues we've written. Um, so in fact that's for the other team. So for our team, the first set of clues that were given were actually particle, team and church. So the rest of my team kind of look at this and think, hmm, which of these words is going to be particle, which is going to be team and which is going to be church. And they kind of deliberate a little bit and then they guess and you're sort of expected to get it right. Uh, if you get it wrong, you get one of these black tokens and if you get it wrong twice you lose and the other team wins so you've got to be very careful that you are accurate enough with these clues that they get it but the problem is you don't want to be too accurate because you can see you do this round after round you keep giving clues meanwhile the other team are giving their clues and each time they're giving clues we're kind of writing down the clues that have been given so the first time one was one of the answers and the clue was wooden you see up here it says wooden and it was one, and then ramp was the next one. So the more clues they give, we're trying to guess, hmm, what is the word that all these things links with? So when they give a new clue, so for the next round, if you like, it's house, red, and deck, based on all the previous clues that have been given for these words, we're looking and thinking, hmm, deck. Which of these sets of words most connects with deck? And in this case, I think it turned out to be two. Um, it was saw and hat. So, you can see it's not clear that deck fits with these because they're trying to be as obscure as they can with the clues. But you can't be too obscure because you do have to get your team to guess the words at the end of the day. So it's about being <clears throat> obvious enough to your team but vague enough that the other team doesn't guess it. If you manage to get the other guesses, guess the other team's word, you get one of the white tokens. The code. Uh, the code, that's right. Then you, if you get two of those, you win. So the way the game ends is either you get two correct guesses of the other team's word, or you lose your own twice, in which case you lose. Um, so first team to accomplish one of these is the winner. What do we think? I think it's really good. Um, it's it's very much, uh, it feels like you're cracking the Enigma code. You're listening into enemy communication and trying to correlate that with things you've heard previously uh, and work out the code for their uh, missile system, whatever it is. Um, so yeah, I think it works really well thematically and game-wise it's, it's very difficult to think of a clue which tells your team what to do but doesn't tell the opponents what's going on. So yeah, it's it's really, really nice game. Steve? I agree with Matt. The theme behind this is so good. It's... Um, that progression between like continual information and trying to narrow it down and you realize that they were so close last time I've got to be really obscure with these ones but then my team might not get it it's really good these are finicky um, so this is a downside of a game that I think is really good initially trying to explain this to people Jonathan gave a really good overview here so if you want to learn how to play the game go back and start listen to Jonathan it's very good but just trying to explain this to other people and what order you do things in and, and when you start guessing and which column you put the numbers in to start with and not to say the number out loud because that gives if I think oh I think you guys are one three four well if they haven't guessed their own numbers yet then you kind of give that away so kind of being very structured how you do it once you get past that and once you've played a, a couple of rounds of this game it's really good. I think, like, picking out what you think the words are, it's one of the tie breaks. So if we tie, so if we both win or both lose at the same time, you're trying to guess their words. And the way we won this particular game is we'd actually guessed correctly two of the words those guys had. So they found it very hard to pass clues on because of the four numbers that came up, if two of them were two of the words we think we knew, we were probably going to crack that code and we did it twice in succession. Um, but apart from possibly a potentially steeper learning curve than other word games, I think it's fantastic. Rating? Oh, 
If it wasn't so slow, I'd rate it higher, but I'm actually going to give it 9 out of 10. Mm, okay. Um, I, yeah, we've only played it twice, well, I've only played it twice now, so I'm not sure how how much I'll keep liking it, but I think it's, yeah, it's very good. I would probably say, yeah, 9 out of 10. Mm, okay. So far. <laughs> If you've played Codenames or Crosstalk, which I really enjoy as well, it's very much in that vein, and I really enjoy those games, and I think this is as good as those games. Um, it's slightly different, which is nice. It is a bit tricky to explain, but once you get it, it's actually very straightforward to play. It's just that initial trying to explain how the guessing and then guessing their words and how that all fits together. As Steve says, the sheets are a bit tricky. Um, but once, but it's really straightforward to play, and there is a timer, so if some people are being slow, you can use this timer, but actually I quite like it when it's slow. I don't mind having an extra couple of minutes to discuss with my team. Are we sure it's going to be this word? Maybe it's connected with this? Because you've got to realise the person giving the clue is trying to find hidden meanings because they don't want to make it obvious to the other team. And I really like that. That whole trying to be subtle, connecting ways that you wouldn't normally think of. If you like those kind of word games, that sort of word play, I think it's fantastic. Um, I'd be on an eight and a half, I think. All right, thanks for watching. That was Decrypto.